So today we're going to look at the use of control accounts to check for theft and also to check for errors. So to understand the control accounts properly we need to refresh our memories as to how um, a debtor and a creditor is actually created in the first place. So if we look here at these blank T accounts, we can see that the original transaction when we sell goods on credit is going to be to credit the sales account with the amount that is sold. So we said that was $1,000. And we would debit the debtor account because our new debtor is being created. And that comes from selling goods to them on credit. And remember, you usually give them about three months to pay you back. So there are basically three scenarios that uh, can play out when it comes to a debtor. The first scenario, of course, is the um, situation where your debtor who owes you money pays you back quicker than you expected or pays you back after the three months you would be expected to give the customer to pay you back. Of course, the second scenario would be where the debtor decides to return some of the goods or all of the goods if they're faulty or maybe they're the wrong color, the wrong type. And we also, in the third case scenario, need to take into account that the debtor may pay us back really quickly, within a week or two, in which case he will or she will be expecting a discount received, and we'll need to take that amount away from the overall debt that the customer owes us. If we assume that this debtor returns some goods to us, um, probably the value of 100 dollars let's say then that's going to go out of our debtors account so it'll knock a hundred off the sales figure and it will go into our returns inwards account of course it's come from our debtor and it goes out to the returns inwards the debtor then may pay us early, in which case uh, the customer will expect that discount. And in that situation, you would have to debit the bank for the amount that they pay. So if you want to imagine, let's say that the debtor pays us of the $900 uh, remaining as a debt, pays us 800 that's going to go out of their account and into our bank accounts from the debtor. Of course, this wouldn't be a debt account yet because you've only got 900 on this side and you've got 1,000 here. The other amount would go to the discount received. And of course, in, that, in this case, it would be 1,000, which means then that both sides add up to 1,000. And this effectively becomes what we call a debt account. The sales ledger control account is an account that is used usually by the chief accountant to check that all the T accounts in the sales ledger, which are your debtor T accounts, are correct and that they tally up with the books of original entry. You're checking for errors and also potentially for theft or fraud, um, money that's gone missing. Hopefully from previous tutorials you'll remember that any credit sale is recorded into the books of original entry. So in this case, the first stage would be recording the credit sale in your sales day book. And any returns made by our customer would be recorded in the returns outwards day book. And any other transactions uh, relating to the payment, hopefully by our debtor, will go into our bank account, which will be recorded in the cash book of original entry. If we allow them any discounts, then that discount will also be recorded in the cash book. Now, what usually happens is the accountants will use that data to do the T accounts in the sales ledger, which contains all your debtor T accounts, and any of the other corresponding 
debit or credit entries into a T-account will obviously be recorded in your general ledger. So if we think of the previous uh, slide where I showed you the double entries, then the debtor account would be recorded here in the sales ledger, but all the other accounts such as the bank account, the discounts allowed and received, and the returns would all be recorded in the general ledger. So the sales ledger control account could be called a total debtor's account, if you like. Um, it looks to add up all the balances carried and brought down of our debtors, which are found in our sales ledger. And then it uses the information from the books of original entry, so the sales day book and the returns and the cash book. And it uses that data to check against the balances from this data. So the chief accountant can check for fraud, for theft, or for an error that's located somewhere in the debtor's accounts by making sure that all the balances carried down and bought down marry up with the information that you've got from the books of original entry. Now, if the balance carried down or bought down doesn't match what you think the balance carried down and bought down should be from your books of original entry, then you know either you've made a mistake or money has gone missing. So as we can see here, the um, balances carried down and bought down are collected from the sales ledger, which is obviously where all the debtors' accounts are kept. Um, so that information is there. Um, in this case, the balance carried down at the end of the month is shown that the debtors owe us 3,368. All the other information is gathered from the various day books, you know, your uh, sales day book, um, your returns inwards day books and outwards day books, etc. So in theory, the source of information comes from two different ledgers, and if there is no theft and no errors, then the sales ledger control account shows that everything is in order, so to speak. So let's have a quick look at this example. We can see here that the balance is brought down again from the sales ledger at the beginning of the month, uh, 1894. Of course, that would be on the debit side because a debtor is an asset, so they owe you money. Uh, the sales gathered from the sales day book shows a balance of 10,290. And the payments by our debtors that have gone out of the debtor accounts into our bank accounts um, are 7284. And the cash payments from our debtors are 72, sorry, 1236. And of course, any returns inwards from our debtors, if they've not been happy with the product or there's something wrong with it, amounts to 296. That would have come from the returns inwards day book. And we can see that the balance, if you work out the balance between the bought down figure, the sales, and what was paid and returned, it does actually equal the 3368. So as this information came from two sources, we can now say that the uh, debtors in our sales ledger and all the other books of original entry that are related to our debtors um, are correct. There's been no theft and no errors. So here we're looking at the control account, which is a purchaser's ledger control account. Um, just to go through the basic double entries to begin with, when we buy something on credit from our suppliers, then the double entry is, of course, to credit the creditor. So let's say, for example, we bought a £1,000 worth of goods. That's going to go to our purchases. And obviously it's going to be debited in our purchases account and it's going to come from our creditor. On a said date, of course. Um, now, let's say, for example, that one of the items arrived damaged and we wanted to return that to our creditor. Then, of course, we would use our returns outwards account and we would, let's say, the value of the returns is 100, just to make it a nice round number. And we would return that to our creditor and of course that would be debited, 100, in our creditor account, uh, from our returns out. And if we are to make a payment, 
for our purchases to our creditors. That's obviously going to come out of our bank account. So let's say, for example, we paid um, £800 owing. That's going to go to our creditor. And it's going to be debited in the creditor account, which means now that the creditor only has a balance of 100 that we still owe him or her as a supplier. So that will come from our bank. And so we're starting to see the pattern of the double entries. Um, now, with the purchaser's ledger control account, the information on the creditors, the balances at the end of the month of all the people that we owe money to, all the suppliers that we owe money to, that will be collected from the purchaser's ledger control account, which is obviously the book that contains all the T accounts of the different suppliers. So we get the information from there. And then the other parts of the information that we gather come from the day books. So we would obviously have the purchaser's day book, We'd look at the returns out day book and we'd look also in our cash book at our bank column and our cash column. And I guess once we've gathered all that information, um, because we've got some of the information from the day books and the rest of the information from the purchaser's ledger T accounts, providing that they marry up and they do actually equal each other in terms of the balance carried down at the end of the month and the beginning of the month, then we can say that the control account has proven that there are no errors. Um, in the double entry uh, between the creditors and the rest of the T accounts, and there's been no theft. So here we can see a graphical representation of the use of a purchaser's ledger control account, and we can see that obviously the credit purchases, which are recorded in our purchaser's ledger, um, will be the details of all our suppliers, i.e. the T accounts of all our suppliers. And if we get the balance carried down and the balance is bought down from that ledger, and then we compare them to the information that's fed into the general ledger, the T accounts, in terms of, this is where you'd find maybe your bank accounts, your returns outwards T accounts, um, and also any purchases made in terms of your purchases day book. So obviously it's going to contain your purchases accounts as well. Well, if we look at the data that is given to us in those T accounts in the general ledger, compare them with the balance carried down and bought down from the purchases ledger, then the control account really is just checking to make sure that the balance carried down and bought down, which you've got from one ledger, the supplier's ledger and the purchases ledger, accounts, um, does it actually marry up and equal um, the information that's given from our bank accounts, our cash accounts, returns outwards and purchases. So the purchases ledger control account is used to check that there has been uh, no errors um, between the suppliers accounts which are kept in the purchases ledger and the general ledger which contains all the other T accounts um, derived from the day books. So if we look here, we would first of all notice that there is a balance at the beginning of the month of 3,890. That means that we owe our creditors that amount of money. And at the end of the month, when we check the balance is bought down, we owe our creditors 5,151. The other information here the amount that we paid our suppliers from our bank or cash accounts, the returns to our suppliers of 95, and any extra purchases that we made from our suppliers on credit through the month is uh, taken from our general led ledger. And those T accounts would have been um, put together based on information coming from the day books. So you can see there's two different sources of information here. Now, interestingly enough, in this particular ledger control account, we can see there is actually an error or theft, and I'll show you how. At the beginning of the month, we would record the 3,890 on the credit side, because obviously it would be a liability as we owe that money to our creditors. We purchased another $4,936 worth of goods, so that would be credited in our creditor account and debited. And... The amount that we've paid our creditors is 3620 and we return $95 worth of goods. Now, 
the balance carried down should be 5,151, but actually when you add up the totals, they come to different numbers, which means that this balance carried down isn't correct and doesn't tally up with the information that we gathered from the general ledger and the day books. Therefore, we can conclude that there are two reasons why this could have happened. There's an error in the double entry between the creditor accounts and the other day um, account or the other T accounts, or there's been some theft that has taken place.